This is my 1976 Ford Bronco that I've owned for about 15 years. It's bone stock, and uh, ever since I first owned it, it had a uh, vibration issue that was seemed associated with driveline speed. So I replaced the driveline uh, with a balanced uh, brand new unit, and it didn't solve the problem. And uh, I concluded that it must be the transfer case output bearing was going bad. So I wanted to replace it without actually removing the transfer case, and I couldn't find any videos online that would discuss this issue. So I created this video on how to replace your transfer case output shaft bearing assembly without removing the transfer case from the unit. So I've determined that the uh, rear output bearing has gone bad based upon a dial indicator uh, movement of a 10 to 15 thousandths. So I'm going to attempt to replace this thing in place. Um, it looks to me like I'm not going to be able to get the housing back without hitting uh, the body up there. This is a stock uh, 1976 Bronco with no lift, no body lift. And so uh, what I'm going to do is attempt to shift the transfer case down so I can get at that by loosening up those, uh, or taking out those four bolts on each side for the transfer case cross member. And uh, hopefully with the uh, motor mounts uh, flexibility, I'll be able to uh, shift it down and uh, get at the uh, output device there. Tipping the transfer case down was successful. You can see there where it's uh, shifted down about three quarters to an inch on uh, each side. And that's going to give us full access to the uh, output shaft assembly. So, first remove a 7 16 inch bolt and take the speedometer cable out. Uh, so I'll throw a Ziploc bag on it with a rubber band to cover it up and protect it. Then remove the uh, five 9 16 inch bolts uh, holding this baby in. Okay, to break the uh, bearing retainer loose, there's a part of the flange here that carries over enough to grab on with a large screwdriver here. Click it underneath there and give it a good smack on that end and it'll pop it loose. And then once you've done that, uh, you can tap on it with a hammer back and forth and work it out. So I'm going to set the camera down for now while I get that taken out of there. All right, so I uh, wiggled it and pried it a little bit, came out very, slid back very simply. And then bring it on down, make sure you don't lose the the bearings inside. So here it is removed. And there's your 13 bearings sitting down there inside of there. Put the assembly in a vise and uh, use an inch and an eighth inch socket to uh, take the lock nut off. So to extract the shaft out with the bearing, it needs to be pressed out. I don't have a press, um, so I'm going to set it in these uh, old bearing rings here. And then uh, screw the nut on top. And then we'll use a brass hammer here to tap it on out. There's your shims, so keep track of them. Ooh. Well, there you go. Interesting. Maybe that's one of my problems. The shims have disintegrated there. That's probably not a good thing, now, is it? So the uh, speedometer gear just pulls up off of there straight up. No problems. Uh, these were the shims that were on top. A thicker one, a thinner one, and uh, one that's disintegrating. And this is the uh, outboard bearing that was on 
on top of all that just slides out. So now uh, I'll need to uh, press, in quotes, because I don't have a press. Uh, we'll tap this off the uh, inner bearing, and then uh, we'll need to tap out the uh, bearing races from each uh, side of the housing. A press is always best, but uh, I was able to uh, pop this bearing off by alternatingly tapping on uh, each side of it uh, while in the vise and just scooting that bearing, the inner bearing on down. So here we are with the final disassembly, um, ready to install with the uh, rebuild kit, which will include new bearings, uh, shims, a new nut, and a new seal. We'll reuse our housing, output shaft, and yoke. Oh, and of course the speedometer gear as well. Clean up the casting really good particularly where the seal's gonna get on there, blow it all out. Um, when I started this video, I didn't have a press. Uh, I since purchased one on Craigslist for a hundred bucks. Good deal. Either way though, you can uh, put these in with, uh, tap them in with a hammer or uh, put them in with a press. Pressing on the uh, board bearing of the shaft. Next on is the speedometer gear. Doesn't need to be pressed on. It gets held in place by the pressure of the whole system when the yoke nut gets put on. Uh, note I have been, have been using some assembly lube uh, as I put this together and I'll also coat all the bearings when we get to that point. And then on top of this, we put the shims on and that's where it gets tricky. Uh, is as indicated we have a certain set group of them so I'm going to put on um, the original stock ones that came with it and then a few of the ones in the kit to try to add up to about a uh, hundred thousandths to start with and then we'll work from there. Okay I randomly selected uh, all three of the original shims I put in there and then one five thousandths shim from the uh, kit that came with the uh, products I bought and then uh, you put the yoke back on the bearing slides down pretty easily so uh, and put the bearing in put the yoke on and then use your old nut don't use the new one in washer to uh, torque this down so they say torque it down to about 110 or 120 foot pounds um, to seat the bearing and then we're going to check uh, for uh, backlash it's obviously it's not tightened down at all yet and uh, there's differing opinions about how you should set these things up the factory dana says to go until you get three to five thousandths slop uh in play as they call it uh, i think that's too loose especially for a new bearing um, a lot of some advice that i got was to set it up um so there's no end play and just maybe a little bit of resistance when you try to turn this if you're buying a new uh, heavy duty one from like wild horses they'll tell you to torque this down or shim it up i'm sorry torque down until you get about five to seven foot pounds of resistance of rotation um, they call it preload i don't know that i'd call that preload but you are preloading the bearings until you get some resistance so what we're going to shoot for is um, zero end play and uh, little or no resistance to rotation and so we keep replacing the shims in there until and torque it down not to the full 150 foot pounds um, and then uh, keep putting shims in and out until you get whatever end play or tension you're looking for. All right, so we've used the torque wrench to torque it down to 120 foot-pounds. As I was tightening it down, I kept an eye on this, kept rotating it, make sure that we didn't bottom out, you know, not enough shims and start pinching the bearings before we got there. So there's freewheeling all the way there. <clears throat> and then um, there's a little bit of slop in there. And so we're going to have to remove some of those uh, shims. Um, I put the uh, dial indicator on there. It's a little tricky to get this reading because uh, it kind of tends to move about as you rock it around and twist it and whatnot. But you can also hear it uh, clicking back and forth in there. So I estimate about four to five thousandths is uh, the end play in there right now, which actually would have been within the factory um, specs for the Dana. 
but like I said, I want it a little tighter. Once you've uh, released all the pressure, you can uh, get the uh, bearing and housing off of there. And then I'm just going to take off that one five thousandths uh, shim there and go with just the three stock ones. And we'll see if that doesn't get us where we want to go. Well, it turns out that was uh, exactly what we needed. Uh, a little bit better setup here on my uh, dial indicator. And uh, it's firmly attached to the base housing. And you can see it's uh, in contact. And then uh, if I take a screwdriver and pry here. Maybe just a slight movement, but that's uh, perfect in my mind. And then uh, rotationally, um, it has just a slight little bit of resistance to it, I think. Not much. So I think we're right where we want to be. Zero backlash. Gonna press that guy in there. And then we'll put the yoke on and torque it down. Okay, this seal's all pressed in. And put a little bit of... Uh, assembly lube on the uh, yoke and on the splines and then we're going to put it together with the new washer the new nut and then we'll torque it down to 150 foot pounds all right there it is all torqued down ready to go and get put back inside and uh, be sure to uh, hold on tight to the yoke in your vise when you're torquing it down 150 foot pounds is quite a bit of torque. So in summary, uh, I ended up not using any of the uh, shim kits that I bought, though I wouldn't go into this with, without having those. They're only six bucks. Um, the shims I pulled out were uh, 32 to 34 from the original factory and one five thousandths inch shim that was disintegrating. Um, when I first set it up, I had uh, little bit of slop when I put the three of those in and a five thousandths shim from the shim pack. So I removed that and I just went with the three original shims that add up to about a hundred thousandths and I get a perfect uh, situation for what I determined to be correct, which is zero backlash and uh, very little uh, resistance to being spun. I ended up not using um, Bronco uh, graveyard seal because it was thinner than the original. And, uh, Bought a different one at the local hardware store, I mean automotive store. And we've got the gasket here ready to go to assemble all new Timken races and bearings set up to go. Now we're ready for the install. A couple of things to be aware of is uh, since we have not removed the casing uh, to properly clean it, uh, you want to make sure you clean the threads out, uh, use some solvent in there. and. Uh, because we're going to um, put the screws back in with RTV to seal it up and uh, it's best if it's clean for that. If you removed it, obviously clean the entire case and that wouldn't be a problem. Also a very important point is to be sure that the gear here didn't drop or move out of alignment with the shaft uh, because when we go to push this thing back in, it has to be concentric. And so make sure you look around here and it's concentric. Uh, and then we're going to uh, put the RTV on, gasket, and uh, push it on in. Okay, here we are all prepped for install. Got our bearings dropped in there uh, using assembly lube and uh, installed the gasket with a thin layer of uh, RTV on both sides. And so we're ready to load her in. Don't worry about the bearings falling out. Um, if you put any kind of lube in there, they'll stay in. They, they, um, once they're all in there, they, they're captured. Okay, well that slid in quite nicely. Alignment was good. And then uh, put a little RTV on your bolts before you put them in and torque them down. All right, so we've got the uh, output bearing assembly installed, torqued it down to 30 foot pounds. Specs call for 25 to 35. Um, also install your speedometer cable so we're ready to go there and we jacked up the uh, transfer case housing till the uh, cross member four bowl assembly lined ran into a little trouble there that was difficult to get it to the bolt started I've noticed that before regardless of uh, 
what you're doing, whether it's in, uh, been fully pulled out or not. Uh, I also noticed on these things that they have a little plastic insert in the bolt. I've never noticed that before. I've done several of these uh, replacements over the years. Anyway, so you can see a ground little bevel on there helps out. You might want to put some Loctite on there, I suppose, if you're worried about that. I, I didn't. I've never had any trouble with it before. Okay, we got everything back in. Um, exhaust heat shield, which you may not have since this is a bone stock unit. And we got our skid plate installed and uh, I've uh, filled it up with oil. I use the Lucas Oil Synthetic 7590. It said it takes nearly two pints, but I uh, only put about a pint and a half. But what I'm going to do is going to start it up before I put the uh, output shaft on, I mean, sorry, the drive shaft on, and uh, run it for a little bit there, let the oil circulate up there with no load on it, and uh, then we'll check the oil and put the drive shaft on. Okay, drive shaft installed, ready to go. Double check the oil level, it was coming out of the fill hole, so got plenty in there. Now for the test drive. Much better. Has not entirely removed the resonant vibration, so there might be something going on in the rear end. But we are running 410s, and at 55 miles an hour, we're doing 2,500 RPM. So I think the repair was a success.